This is Dumb Down Life number 121. Good evening, Darren. How are you? I'm not so bad, sir. How's yourself? Um, well, I'm all right now. Now? <laughs> how's, your, how's your little legs? <laughs> they, they took a few days to recover, let me tell you. Really? Yes. Um, we, we climbed Snowden on Thursday, but we didn't do it in quite the way that we hoped we would. <laughs> Intended, I think, rather than hoped. <laughs> Yeah, okay, intended. Yeah, <laughs> fair point. <laughs> I uh, made a slight navigational error right at the beginning, which pushed us onto a completely different route to the one that we'd chosen. Well, no, had you gone right at the beginning, you'd have been okay. You went left. At the <laughs> yeah, okay. Did you not even look at Google Maps and do the whole thing well, in virtually actual, before you started? In actual fact, that was the problem. I'd researched it an awful lot. <laughs> And I knew that there were three routes from the place we were starting. There's the Gribgok route, the Pig Pass, and the Miner's Track. Now, you look on Google Maps and whatever, and I'd got it into my head it was the middle track, which it kind of is. But what you have to do to get on that middle track is take the top track, which then splits off. I looked at the map in the wind and... A bit of overconfidence, I guess. Uh, looked at about, oh, we want that middle route. Yep, so that's, oh, we'll, we'll take that track and then it splits off. No. I'd pick the lower track, which then itself splits off to the, the Snowden horseshoe and the miners track. So when we split off, we were on the miners track. So, um, yeah, slightly different walk to the one we'd planned. And this was the hardest of the three, I take it. No, Grib Glock is the hardest one. Oh, okay. That, the, that takes you right over a ridge, uh, the pointed part of the top of the, uh, a hill, Grib Glock. Um, and that is a, it's called a ridge walk, where pretty much you're on your knees, if you're a bit of a scared person like me of heights, um, and you're you're walking right over a ridge, sheer drops either side, and absolutely insane. Don't suggest you try that. The miners track and the pig track are essentially the same route. Right. The pig track follows it sort of halfway round the side of the Gribgok walk. So you're sort of halfway down a hill. Yep. So that, so there's a slight incline from where you start and then an incline at the end. The miners track goes right round the base of that instead. So you've got all of the climb right at the end. Uh-huh, okay. So essentially... Oh, it's always your phone. I'm it, it's always my phone. Is it? I'll answer that later. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So essentially, we we had all the work to do after a seven mile walk. Oh, right. Seven miles. It's it's a seven and a half mile walk, and we we're probably about half a mile from Snowden, the summit, once we got to the climb. Isn't the seven miles there and back? No. Oh, okay. Because uh, what, what I saw, I it looked as if it was a four mile walk. To be honest, I didn't measure it, and I've just done a, <laughs> uh, I've just done a quick look on um, Wikipedia to get the distances. But uh, yeah, you're probably right. That probably is a circular trip. Because yeah, I'd got it into my head. It was about four or five miles at the most. Yeah. Yeah. So you, you'd got this climb, and honestly, I I really thought at points that I wasn't going to make it. Oh goodness. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, you essentially end up at the end of the miners' track. You're at a lake called Glaslin, which yep. is about 600 metres up. Um, you did ask me how how uh, last week when um, where you start from. How high up were you? Yeah. And you are at about 360 metres. Okay. And the Snowden summit is a 1,085 metres. Right. Um, so. You got about 720, 725, something like that, meters from the mm-hmm. start to uh-huh. the summit. But on the miners' track, you end up at um, it's a lake called Glaslin, yep. and that is about uh, 600 meters up. Okay. So you've still got 400, nearly 500 meters to climb. In the last little bit. In a very short space of time. Yeah. And um, the path wasn't particularly well defined. Yeah. 
it's kind of there and you can see where other people are walking but it's not a defined track it's over rocks and such like so it's not full-on rock climbing but there is some scrambling over lumps and things like that to sort of contend with yeah. and then halfway up that it rejoins where the pig track would have come in so had we have gone the right route we'd have cut out half of that climb because we'd have done it right at the beginning yeah and then it's there's this uh, part of the route called the zigzags and that is an absolute killer because it's so steep it zigzags yeah but yeah it that just really took it out of me and, and I, you'd have done that even if you'd have gone by the pig track yes yeah yeah um but that really did take it out of me i i, I guess had i had done half the climb then a sort of three or four mile walk and then the zigzags probably wouldn't have done me in quite as much but because we did it all getting towards the top i was absolutely buggered now uh, I, I couldn't quite make it out but it looks at the top as if is there a cable car or a, a, a train it, that goes yeah there's a train that ah. come that goes from clamberis which is the town we were staying in yeah. um, they run a train from there all the way up to the summit um, oh, right. and there's a cafe at the top and everything yeah um which was nice because as we got to the top it the summit covered over with cloud having been clear all bloody day oh. um and the rain came down it was cold it was wet it was awful oh, um, dear. yeah the summit had stayed clear when we got to the bottom to to glaslin lake we stopped for a cup of coffee um and we're looking up and we could see the summit we could see some cloud coming in round sort of from where we'd walked yeah. But it was really low cloud. It wasn't coming near us, and the summit was still clear. So we thought, oh, we're going to get away with this. But no, um, just as we got to, I'd call it the first summit, if you like. You, after the the steep climb, it kind of comes out onto a bit of a plateau that's quite a short um, rise up to the actual summit. Yeah. Um, as we got up to there, no, the cloud came through, the rain came down, and despite having walked most of it in just a t-shirt i needed waterproof coat i needed hat i yep. needed gloves yep. um yeah it, it was pretty foul up there that's the thing you've got to be prepared for it to to, to change on, on, on absolutely like that, absolutely you? i mean we, we were walking and people in front of us and behind us they were walking in jeans and t-shirts um shorts really unsuitable footwear and it looked great while they were walking along the flat bits but you as we got up to the top, you could see them all just sort of shivering and yeah. sort of looking really, really bad. Yeah. Um, and we just pulled out all of our kit that we'd got on the back. I mean, there were people out there with no backpacks, no walking canes, nothing. Well, no, because um, it's nice weather. Why would you need any of that? Yeah, <laughs> but totally, totally unprepared. But um, having had a guy that's done it before and gave me a proper kit list of what I really needed to take with me, yeah. uh, I'm so glad I paid attention. <laughs> Absolutely. But yeah, overall, uh, I think I did. So the, the the walk to was about four, four and a half miles. The walk back was about six. All right. Because we, we went back a different route. We, yeah. As I said, we were staying in Clamberis. So yeah. we went down the Clamberis path, which more or less follows the train. The railway. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, but that's slightly longer, but it's a lot um, easier. Yeah, it would have to be, yeah. But I couldn't tell you how long it took us to get back. Because you weren't interested. <laughs> um, more to the point that as we got off the hill, um, before we got fully back into Clamberis, there's a little cafe that serves beer. Yeah. And we stopped. <laughs> and we stopped yeah. there for quite a while. We had a nice whiskey, had some cider. Um, yeah. had a chat with the locals and then carried on so i couldn't really tell you how long the, the the backwards trek would have taken us but overall we left we caught the bus from clamberis at 20 past nine got to penny pass and i guess we started walking about quarter to ten we reached the summit around quarter to two so about four hours yeah but I, I, I'm not sure entirely of the time because once I'd got to the top, strangely, I wasn't actually interested in how long it took me. I was just pretty overjoyed to actually have got there. Yeah, in the first place. Yeah. Didn't think to look at my watch. Uh, but I do know we were sitting in the cafe drying off and I asked Jay what the time was and he said 20 past two. And we must have been there at least half an hour by then because we'd spent 10, 15 minutes or so up on the summit doing photos and just looking and resting and what have you. And then we'd spent a good 10, 15 minutes in 
the cafe. So we must have been there at least half an hour. So I would say about quarter to two. And then we left about probably quarter to three because we stayed in there for quite a while and had a bite to eat and that. And I was cooking dinner at the campsite at 10 to 7. So having been in the pub and had all of that and then walked back to the campsite. So I'd say probably three, three and a half hours back. Has it whetted your appetite for trying a climb again? Or oh, absolutely. Or next weekend? Or? Absolutely. Um, yeah, it, I mean, it really has grabbed me. Um, I want to do more. I mean, technically, the only way up from here is to do um, Ben Nevis because that's the only higher point in the yeah. UK. But there, there was three hills that we used to do a lot when I was a scout um, 20 years ago that I really would like to do now that I'm slightly more interested in doing it. When I was a 14-year-old scout, I was just being dragged along by the scout leaders. And, yeah. But now I'm sort of slightly more interested in it. I would like to do them again. And I have been looking at campsites and train fares and the logistics of getting up there to do it. So maybe later on in the summer, I may go off and do some of those. I could do those on my own because they're not, they are hills, they're not mountains. Well, the other the other option is, um, you don't necessarily have to look for train fares. Um, if we can make it a long weekend, we'll, we'll, we'll do it as a, as a duo. So. Oh, absolutely. I mean, if you're interested in doing it, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, um, up in Yorkshire. It's a shame your dad's moved, really. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, up in Yorkshire, but we don't know anybody up in Yorkshire. Um, yeah, <laughs> I, I, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, we could go see Dave, couldn't we? We can make the next pod crawl a literal crawl up a mountain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, no, if you're interested, yeah, definitely, so am I. Yeah, it, I mean, finding sort of spaces on calendars and the like, but that aside, um, definitely um, would be interested in, in giving it a try. Mm. But... What, with regards to sort of doing something like that with the scouts, would that that I would I take it would require other people to sort of come and chaperone with you and be a bit more involved, wouldn't it? Uh, it would be more involved, but um, the guy who I did Snowden with, Jay, he's another scout leader. In fact, he is the scout leader. I'm just an assistant. Um, right. He is currently waiting to be assessed for his i think it's t1 terrain one certification which means he can take a limited number of scouts up to a maximum height of i think it's 800 meters (laughs) it's it's interesting that the height is the defining uh, criteria you'd think there would be something a bit more than that because an 800 meter ladder (laughs) <laughs> quite scary but then you know a hundred meter ladder would be quite scary <laughs> yeah I, I think it is just purely on the height um because of adverse weather conditions and the nature of the terrain after a certain height or something i don't really know but i, I believe it is just a, a height limitation yeah. uh, and within possibly a certain distance of a road i think he was mentioning that yeah that sort of thing mate yeah, yeah. But yeah, once he gets that, then we'll, we we could do we could go to Snowden and we could do the miners track, but not make that final climb, which kind of seems a little bit mean to go. We'll walk along here for five miles, guys. Look, there's the top of Snowden. Right back we go. Uh, <laughs> but um, we could do the three hills that I was talking about a second ago. We certainly could take the scouts up there. So um, yeah, it, and it's all sort of the walking that we're doing it's all practice for him um i think his final assessment would be to take somebody who is qualified um along with a bunch of scouts and actually do a walk with them so he the guy with the certification can be the responsible adult but can see jay perform um in that situation so basically they just carry the bit of paper while jay runs the event and hopefully he's looking at doing that either this year or next, which means we're we're free to do whatever we want then. Yeah, exactly. Nice. You're listening to Dumbed Down Life. So are you all up to date on your movie watching, film watching? No. What was the sort of last in the Marvel series that you've seen? The Avengers. So you've not seen the Iron Man 3 Oh, no, yet? sorry. No, I did. Yeah, I went to see Iron Man 3. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> So, are you all up to date on your event? <laughs> I'm up to date on the Marvel ones, yes. 
Um, can, and, and what about the Star Trek? You seen the new Star Trek? No. No? So it's, it's pretty much only the new Star Trek that you're, you're missing at the moment. Isn't and it? Superman. <sighs> I'm not sure if I want to see that. Um, I really want to see it because apparently they've made a good Superman movie. But um, I really don't want to pay cinema prices for it, so I shall wait for the DVD. There's that, and, and, but um, from what I read, they they most um, reviews have said leave dark to Batman. It, it shouldn't be doing the, the um, Superman into the darkness. <laughs> it's it just hasn't worked apparently. See, I've heard conflicting ones. I've heard that it's a Superman for the modern day in. The, the way they describe that is in a good way. Yeah. So I don't I don't know. I, I guess it's a personal preference thing. What are you expecting from Superman? Well, we'll have to wait until that comes out on DVD then, because likewise, I'm I'm not that enthused to go see it at the cinema. I, I, How, I really wanted to, but it was just too damn expensive. Cinema. Well, what I am interested to go see at the cinema, um, but this won't be out until September, is Rush. Have you seen anything about that one? Haven't even heard of it. Rush, it's Chris Helm- Hemsworth. Do you know who Chris Hemsworth is? It's either Thor or Thor's brother. Thor. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> um, Thor is... Oh, sorry. Chris Hemsworth <laughs> play, plays James Hunt. And it's the story of James Hunt oh. and Nicky Lauder. Ah, right. And, yeah, have a look at the trailers for that when, when we uh, finish our recording because mm. it looks very good. I, I think we spoke about this when we were last doing recordings, but I remember in my youth, when we were watching Formula One, deaths weren't that unusual. No. And I, I certainly saw a I saw a, a, a film um, about how uh, Jackie Stewart and his era of racers had actually um, went on strike because the engineering and everything was getting the cars faster and faster and faster without considering the safety of the drivers. Um, and the safety of the drivers was down to, well, you know, if, if you want safe, then drive slower. It's like, <laughs> oh, that's not the idea. Um, and that kind of reminded me, you know, when we saw all the tyres falling apart at um, Silverstone this weekend. You've seen that, haven't you? I have, yeah. Yeah. And, and how they're considering sort of... Um, pulling out of, of, of the next race unless there's a proper inquiry into these tyres. And this is the sort of thing that, that Jackie Stewart did back in the early 70s um, to make sure that things that we take for granted now, like armco barriers, are put down the side. They, they, they used to have bales of hay um, down the side of the track as protection. Well, I mean, wasn't it sort of those guys that the the, the, the sort of points they raised and the 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 power or the say that they wanted isn't that what gave rise to this the 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 concord agreement i Um, don't concord agreement yeah there's um there's a driver's um group that any rule changes and everything that they have to have a say in and which weber was head of wasn't he i I believe so yeah um and i I think that is the sort of result of the sort of protests that those guys are making yeah it's a lot of it, it was beyond that. It was it was the case that um, the, the, the the people with the money, the advertisers, were seen as being the ones who had all the power, and the the drivers and the drivers' lives and the, and the loss of life was you know part of the the risk of being a driver, and it was pretty much taken for granted. Mm. And they said, well, no, it doesn't need to be. Uh, we want safety being brought into this because I. I on some of the larger tracks like Germany, they didn't even have cameras all the way around. So if somebody was in first position, they went off. And then when the cars came back, well, okay, there's clearly been some overtaking because the guy who was first hasn't come back yet. <laughs> we ought to go look and find out if he's all right. And he's come off the track, gone down a ditch somewhere. And, and it's been sort of 15, 20 minutes before they've even got yeah. something out to him and that's the sort of thing that they were dealing with end of 60s beginning of the 70s now with rush um they tell the story of james hunt and nicky lauder and the accident that nicky lauder was in you you literally had drivers getting out and waving down other drivers to slow down so wasn't it louder that um got burned he, he, yeah 
Um, I it was. And it was only something like just over a month before he was back in a car. Oof. Yeah. And and you see some of the, the, the footage, because obviously this, this sent me on a little YouTube uh, <laughs> search, and they've actually got footage from the from the the, um, the accident at the time. And it, it's... They, they have sort of a regular ambulance turned up with St. John's ambulance people get out the back and you know, a, a, a solid board and some of the drivers and the ambulance people help to lift him onto the board. Compared to what we've got nowadays, it's absolutely astounding what they, what they used to have to, to, to work with. Mm. But I didn't know, because this was 1976, so I was only five at the time and didn't really realise all the, um, the rivalry at the time between the two drivers. Uh, I guess there's always been sort of, because it, it was Damon Hill and Schumacher. Schumacher when we were sort of old enough to see the rivalry. But back then it was, uh, say, um, um, James Hunt and Nicky Lauder, and they, they were pretty much rock stars. I guess they, the drivers of today still have that kind of a, an era with them, but it, it, it's looking to be quite an interesting... And you, d- you do hear stories of those guys where they go out for all-night benders the day before they're going out on a race and stuff, exactly. don't you? Yeah. I mean, they, exactly. they, they lived the rock star lifestyle. They didn't just have the celebrity. They were living that kind of lifestyle, weren't they? Yeah. So, yeah, I'd be interested to go see that. And that's coming out in September. Mm. Um, and, yeah, th- 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 that, that should be fun. Hi, this is Scott Segler, author of the novels Infected and Contagious. And you are listening to Dumb Down Life. Have you been listening to any podcasts recently? Or, or did you ever stop? I mean, I, I stopped. Because I'm driving to work a very short distance and sort of didn't really have time to, to get the, the, uh, a full podcast in a day, so it wasn't worth it. But, I, I, I'm kind of fluctuating. Sometimes I've got loads, um, and then other times, I, I mean, I haven't really listened to any for about a week or more. I'm, I'm tending more to listen to music on the way to work at the minute. That's mainly because I'm having issues with the podcast app on the iPhone is appalling. Yeah. I stopped using uh, Downcast because I've restarted using Last FM, and I wanted to scrubble the listens, which it doesn't yeah. do if you listen to it through Downcast. Yep. Um, but now I've got myself into a bit of a mess where I don't know what I've listened to, what I haven't listened to, um, and so I've kind of not listened to any for a while. The only two that really that I've kept up with is um, the award-winning Budcast. Ah, uh, and probably. and um, Scott Sigler. I'm still listening to Sigler. I've just started listening to the last episode of the uh, the latest story. Have you have you got that far yet? Uh, yeah, I've finished it. Yeah, I finished it last night actually. Okay. <laughs> Shh, <that's> <laughs> uh, yeah, I've just got to the last episode of that. I've not heard it yet. But um, I've been using. Um, uh, I'm going to have to open my phone to remember what the name of the application is. Um, pod Beyond Pod. I don't know if, whether that's available for the uh, iPhone Beyond Pod. Um, I, I haven't looked to be honest. So you've managed to find one, have you? Because you're having trouble finding one for Android, weren't you? <laughs> it, it's not. I, I tried Beyond Pod a while ago, and I didn't really get on with it. Um, but I don't think I gave it long enough to try it properly. Um, I've been using that now for a couple of weeks. And it's it's quite good. Um, it makes it a lot easier to, to track what you've um, listened to and, um, and how far. And it, it does do the sort of pausing halfway through a podcast. Because a lot of the music apps, they don't have the concept of resuming where you left off. Yeah. So if you close the app, when you come back to it, it starts from the beginning again. Yeah. Um, but this works pretty well. And I've been listening to Merlapity. Yes, I've heard of. I haven't listened to any of her stuff. Um, the Shambling Guide to New York is the one that. I'm yes, I, she she was on um, one of the Friday fixes on the Scott Sigler's podcast, and she was talking about about that. It wasn't a Friday fix. It was actually after one of the was it stories because he made a big thing of saying this is the first time we've ever had somebody 
on after one of my stories, yeah. you should feel privileged. And and actually, that's what got me interested. So um, I've started listening to to her story. Is it uh, good? Yes. If you're into sort of zombies and stuff, very similar to what was Scott's? Um, I want to say night creatures. It wasn't night creatures. Um, <laughs> Oh dear! Yeah, he's, it's, he, cool. it's just redoing it, isn't it? It's potentially going to be a TV show, or have you not heard that? Um, um, I had. I can't remember what it's called. Nocturnal. 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 Yes, that's the one. Very similar, sort of, to that in that it's a "they're amongst us" sort of um, story. Um, there's only been eight episodes so far, so I would highly recommend it. They're, they're much shorter as well. They're only about twenty minutes. Which is nice. That's about a commute, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that, because even if it's not a full commute, you know, it's 10 minutes there and 10 minutes back, it's enough to sort of... It, it's an episode in a day, it, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Which is nice. Yeah. Um, some of the longer ones, like you were saying the other day, that if they're, they're too long, it's just difficult to uh, to fit it in at any time. I mean, this is my problem. I mean, there's a few of them that I listen to that I really, really enjoy. But you just don't get the time to listen to that and others podcast. Yeah. I mean, there's one. It's called Stuff to Blow Your Mind, which is from the you know the website How Stuff Works. Yep. They they do a podcast um, called Stuff to Blow Your Mind, and they they go in depth into they pick a subject um, and go really into depth on it, and can sometimes take two or three episodes to get through it. But they seem to release them fairly regularly in like one two sometimes even three a week oh, and they're all over an hour long yeah which um, is too long it, it is annoyingly if they did it once a week you could cope with an hour but yeah. you got three hours worth and you, you, once you've listened to one you can't kind of stop and so, otherwise you don't get the full article the full story um and it just sort of eats into the the time of the other one so it's one i'm going to drop unfortunately yeah. because of its length yeah, you know. the, the whole idea for me when I first started listening to podcasts was that they would be something to break up the music. Yeah. So yeah, having having two or three stories that you listen to through the week, and then listening to music on the alternate days, that that's fine. Um, it tends to be that most people release their recordings on a weekend. Yeah. So you end up on Monday with a whole lot to listen to, and then by sort of Wednesday Thursday you've you've caught up. The, the idea of people sort of releasing them throughout the week would have been nice, but I, I'm not very good. If there's a podcast there that's released, I want it, and I'm probably listen to it as soon as I can. Absolutely. <laughs> so, you, you tend to listen to music when you've run out of podcasts. Exactly. Rather than go, well, I've got that Scott Sigler story. I'll listen to that Friday. No, I won't. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I would like to listen to them at work because I, I do listen to music at work, but... Um, can't concentrate it, it's, yeah you, you're either not concentrating on the job you're doing or you're not listening to the podcast that's playing so um, I mean, it, and, and other times it, there's also questionable content or language yeah um, but radio i can't listen to radio because it, it's just distracting to it yeah so it is for me it is just pure music but i do listen to them on the commute on the train in the mornings on the train yes i didn't realize you were taking a train uh <laughs> right okay yes um so i lost my bike from a car accident yep and then my dad died and i inherited his car yep which has now died have you got that fixed yet not yet okay because i can't afford to um yep. so currently and it actually does work out cheaper currently i am walking to the train station um about a mile catching the train walking from the Wellingborough station to work, which is about a mile. So I'm walking about four miles a day and a 10 minute train journey. And it works out cheaper than driving. And um, the 10 minute train journey is what? One, one stop, two yeah, stops? One stop. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's about 10 miles. So I do tend to, I was listening to podcasts a lot during there, but um, with all the messing around with different apps, I've kind of got myself into a bit of a uh, confusion as to what I've listened to, what I haven't listened to, what I need to listen to. So I'm I'm almost going to flush the system and start again. Yeah, yeah. But but I would like to do it as a stagger the the podcast. So you listen to like one a day and then music for the rest of it or something. Yeah, 
Yeah. yeah, especially if you're listening to music at work, then yeah, it, it, you, you reserve the podcast for the, for the journeys rather than anything else. Yeah, absolutely. Well, so I, I guess for um, next episode, I'm going to have to find something else interesting to have done. Well, you, you've got the whole thing about the motorbike, which we didn't cover last time. We just almost touched on it again this time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I could do that. So we can do that next time, along with whatever else we can find. Yeah. But until then, to Rob. <laughs>